coverage you can count on. You're watching Way 31 News at 4.30. And I am thrilled to report that the U.S. Space Command headquarters will move to the beautiful uh, locale of a place called Huntsville, Alabama, forever to be known from this point forward as Rocket City. It's official. After years of debate, Huntsville takes Space Command headquarters. Thank you for staying with us for Way 31 News at 430. I'm Marie Waxel. The announcement coming down just before 2 o'clock this afternoon from the president himself, surrounded by Alabama lawmakers in Washington, D.C. We're continuing our team coverage on this major announcement for you this afternoon. Evening anchor Jim Abbott is standing by with reaction from Huntsville Mayor Tommy Battle. Way 31 reporter Paige Meyer is live at the Rocket City Tavern for us this afternoon as they prepare for an influx of new customers. And Way 31's Julia Miller and Georgia Clark are on the ground in our community getting your reaction this afternoon. At this time now, I want to bring in Lieutenant General Retired Dan Carbler to give us a better understanding of what this move means to the Huntsville area. General Carbler most recently served as Commanding General of the Army Space and Missile Defense Command headquartered at Redstone Arsenal. He led the mission change and subsequent stand up of U.S. Space Command. General Carbler, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. You bet, Marie. Glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about what does this mean overall, the additional, uh, the I guess, the relocation of Space Command headquarters in terms of national defense and how it impacts Huntsville. Yeah, if you think about national defense, and, and our number one priority is defending the homeland. And Huntsville really has the nexus of all the pieces of defending the homeland. First, we all know about the Missile Defense Agency and Space and Missile Defense Command and our mission to make sure that the ground-based interceptor uh, brigade uh, protects the homeland. And now with the addition of U.S. Space Command, we just bring in that additional element to protect the homeland, whether it's going to be early warning uh, for missile launch or when you look at Golden Dome for America, those space-based interceptors that President Trump has stated in his executive order have to be part of the Golden Dome for America uh, defense architecture set up. And so moving Space Command here, co-locating it with the Missile Defense Agency, Space and Missile Defense Command, and all the other space elements here within Redstone Arsenal and the greater Huntsville area, it's just an incredible opportunity to contribute to, to national defense. It's interesting too, General Carbler. a lot of people don't typically correlate the Army and space together, but in fact, the Army plays a very big role in terms of space and, and space command. It does. I mean, the Army is the biggest user of space. You look at any brigade combat team within the Army, you know, 3,000 pieces of its equipment are space enabled, whether that's communications equipment, navigation equipment, or even some of our uh, weapons equipment, all are space enabled. And so, yeah, the Army Army is a huge user of space. We have our first space brigade out in Colorado Springs, and we provide a space capability to maneuver commanders as well as to the joint force. Seeing all the inspections, we've read the reports and the rankings, but in your opinion, why is Huntsville the best location for Space Command Headquarters? Yeah, again, it's, it, it's just the nexus of all space and missile defense uh, expertise, and whether it's the acquisition side where we have uh, the program executive office for uh, missiles in space. Again, the Army Service Component Command for Space Command is, is SMDC. Uh, you've got uh, NASA here. So again, just the synergies that are going to be gained out of locating Space Command here are, are just incredible. And, and people should also recognize that just because Space Command is leaving Colorado Springs, there are still going to be in a, a number of space capabilities, space organizations that will remain in Colorado Springs, whether it's out at Schriever Space Force Base or Peterson Space Force Base. So Colorado, though they might lose the Spacecom headquarters and, and those folks within that four-star command, they are still gonna have plenty of space capabilities and expertise remaining in Colorado Springs. 
And I think that's really important. Again, a good point to drive home. It's the headquarters. It's not the entirety of the command picking up and relocating here to Huntsville. You know, it's easy for a lot of folks not to understand the significance of what this means for people not directly connected with the DOD. What do you think people need to know, especially you now that you've entered into the civilian world for the most part of being retired nowadays? What do you think people really need to know and appreciate about this move from the civilian side of things? Sure. There's just going to be incredible opportunities for the whole community. You know, you know you've had the, the real estate folks on restaurants, small businesses, but also when we look at, at things like what Chuck Carr is doing at the University of Alabama Huntsville in standing up uh, different science and technology disciplines like uh, aerospace and, and space related um, engineering degrees, et cetera. I mean, some of his students have came and worked for me at Space and Missile Defense Command as interns. And then we later hired them on as employees to, to work within the organization. And so there are just going to be incredible number of opportunities. And, I, and what we're going to see here now is this, is this legacy of service within that, that we've always had in Huntsville and Redstone Arsenal, but now um, an ability to broaden out that legacy of service. I mean, I have, I have had youngsters at Space and Missile Defense Command whose dad or mom or even grandparents worked within, within the arsenal and they wanted to follow in their footsteps. Space Command is going to give additional opportunities for our youth at Huntsville for, for this generational growth uh, in our um, space and missile defense world. All right. That is Lieutenant General Retired Dan Carbler joining us this afternoon. We'll check back in with him during our five o'clock newscast. Thank you so much for that insight. And we'll talk a little bit more about the impact that it can have here in Huntsville. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Don't miss the second part of this interview coming up at five o'clock. Well, local lawmakers have been lobbying for the relocation of headquarters for years, and now they're taking to social media to react to this game-changing announcement. Senator Katie Brett in a red today standing right there in the Oval Office expressing her gratitude to President Donald Trump this afternoon. Let's take a listen to her comments. Mr. President, we are grateful uh, for your leadership on this and restoring Space Command to its rightful home in Huntsville, Alabama. This delegation has worked together, um, both chambers, both parties, to make sure that Huntsville was the place that Space Command called home. As was mentioned, obviously the Biden administration chose to make this political. What we want to do is put the safety and security of Americans first. We want to make sure that our warfighter is put first, and we want to make sure that America continues to lead. And today, Mr. President, you've allowed that to happen. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey also reacting in a statement released on social media just a short time ago. The governor said, quote, as I have said all along, there's no better place to locate Space Command headquarters than in Huntsville, Alabama. Today, the facts prevailed and it is official. Space Command headquarters is coming to sweet home Alabama, end quote. And we've been monitoring reaction from our newsroom out of Colorado as well since this decision was made official this afternoon. Governor Jared Polis putting out this statement today saying, quote, I'm deeply disappointed by Trump's decision to relocate U.S. Space Command to Alabama as it undermines national security, wastes millions of taxpayer dollars, and disrupts the lives of military families, end quote. Well, in response to today's announcement, the garrison here at Redstone Arsenal released a statement that reads quite the opposite. Redstone Arsenal, it reads, quote, Redstone Arsenal is a thriving federal center of excellence where the Army, FBI, NASA, and other agencies come together to drive innovation and advance our nation's interest. We're proud of the work being done here, and we are ready to welcome Space Command, which fits perfectly within our four core competencies, space, logistics, research, and intelligence operations, end quote. Huntsville Mayor Tommy Battle reacting to the big news in person and via social media as he shared his little watch party that they had at City Hall a short time ago on social media. I want to check over now with Way 31's Jim Abbott, who joins us live from one of the most beautiful places to check out the view of the Rocket City. Jim, you get the gorgeous location of Burrett on the mountain out there on Barron Bluff yeah. this evening. <laughs> Lucky you. Glad the rain stopped. I want to talk about Mayor Battle and the announcement this afternoon. He said there's so much more uh, than Space Command headquarters really adding growth to the area. Give us a little bit of some of the touch points that the mayor talked about. Obviously, he's been planning on this announcement to come down for quite some time. What was his overall reaction first to today's announcement? 
Yeah, it was really interesting, Marie, because he kind of uh, related today to Christmas Day. It's something that you wait for for a long time, and now Christmas Day is here. But they weren't surprised, happy, obviously, that it is now going to be here permanently, but something that they have been planning for for seven years now. He says you also kind of have to keep in mind that this isn't something new for Huntsville and North Alabama. It's something that they've gotten used to being able to uh, relate to the growth that's here. Going back 30 years, AMCOM back in 1995, Army Aviation in 2005, Army Material Command. So it's kind of given them a blueprint for how to plan for growth and be able to go from there. Again, looking at anywhere from 1,200 to 1,600 jobs initially that will be coming in. And of course, it will spin off from there. Too early to tell, he says right now, exactly what that growth is going to be. So they're going to kind of wait and see how those numbers come in to be ordered to kind of figure out how they grow and how they kind of work around that. But he says there are always those spinoffs, right? You've got people who come here who move here, and they're expecting that with, with the Space Command headquarters that come in and they build a widget. And then the widget turns into a firm. The firm turns into a bigger company, and then that company attracts other companies here. And it's probably too early to even figure that there are some aspects that we can't even think of right now that are going to relate themselves well to Space Command that are going to materialize not over just the next five years, but probably the next 10 to 15, 20 years. On top of that, now we talk about a missile defense system. We talk about NASA and the Marshall Space Flight Center here. But it says you also have to keep in mind the two-year, the community colleges and the four-year colleges, how they have now built themselves up. So now you've got students coming here who are learning more about how to work into that workforce. And once they get out, then they start to move over toward Redstone Arsenal. And that can only continue to build in the future. So an interesting time and something he says will be kind of uh, great for the area to see how that's going to explode now over the next 15, 20, 30 years. Marie? Really exciting and, and really kind of you echoed what retired Lieutenant General Carbler said just a moment ago. Look at the work being done with Dr. Carr at UAH and all of those students and really beefing up education and the offerings here in the, uh, the North Alabama region. Hey, Jim, real quickly, we've got about 30 seconds. Did the mayor touch on any overall plans okay. for infrastructure and roads? There are actually. There's a couple right now. There are five projects that they're working on right now that they've got to get federal money in order to bring that to fruition. But there are two right now that are well on their way. I remember talking with Mayor Battle 10, 15 years ago, talking about how to stay ahead of the curve. These two projects are already there as far as reliever roads and how to help going in and out of the Redstone Arsenal. Coming up at 5 o'clock, we'll see how he breaks those down and how you can expect that soon. Marie? All right. Thank you so much, Jim. We want to continue our team coverage now on this major announcement. Way 31's Paige Meyer joins us live from right outside Redstone Arsenal's Gate 9 over there at the Redstone Gateway with business reaction to today's big news. Paige, what's the buzz out there? Hey, Marie, yes, I spoke with a business partner of three different restaurants and markets here in Huntsville who tells me with Space Command's headquarters moving to the Rocket City, it will impact all of his businesses. Now, Rocket City Tavern, Fierro Mexican Grill, and Rocket City Market are all located right off of Redstone Arsenal's Gate 9. They've been in the Rocket City for almost a decade, conveniently located by the Visitor Center. Partner Michael Northern says anytime people come by the Arsenal and pass through their locations, they all could benefit from it. We're excited about the prospect of having more people joining the Arsenal. Um, I'm not exactly certain as to where their location is within the arsenal, but I assume that it's probably pretty close to our gate, and uh, we certainly would welcome them in. As a business standpoint, Rocket City Tavern and Company here are ecstatic with all the new potential business that will be coming to the Rocket City. Reporting live in Huntsville with coverage you can count on. Paige Meyer, Way 31 News. Well, we are finally looking at a dry Way 31 triple Doppler 444 on your Tuesday afternoon. It's been a soggy one, but we're finally starting to dry out across the Tennessee Valley. We will still have a chance to see some isolated showers going into the afternoon or dinner time hours tonight, but 6 p.m. we're going to remain dry. So if you have any outdoor tours that need to be done, go ahead, do it quickly because by 10 p.m. we'll start to see some more heavy rainfall across the Tennessee Valley. But as we head into Wednesday morning, looks like we're going to be starting off dry before we have 
have yet another chance to see some scattered showers heading into Wednesday afternoon. Right now, looking at the Rocket City, got a mix of clouds and sunshine. Temperatures on the cooler side, sitting in the low 70s thanks to the rainfall. Have a south wind at 5 miles an hour, feeling exactly like 73 degrees. So the humidity, not too bad as well. Again, everywhere is feeling these cooler temperatures, except where they haven't seen the rain. 77 in Scottsboro, 76 in Fort Payne, 74 in Muscle Shoals, 71 in Moulton. If you have to walk the dog over the next couple of hours, go ahead, make sure there's no rain in your area by looking at the Way 31s from Track or Weather app. If you have the all clear, then go ahead and do so. It's going to be feeling comfortable sitting in the mid to low 70s. In just a couple minutes, I'll be back. I'll let you know about the big weather change we have heading into the end of the week. More people are packing up and moving to Huntsville. We'll introduce you to one local realtor who took a leap of faith and an early jump on welcoming folks from Colorado. And Space Command's area of responsibility is everything 100 kilometers or roughly 62 miles above sea level and beyond. Now we're talking the same as a little more than 1,000 standard football fields end to end. That's roughly the distance from Huntsville area out to the Shoals. That's more to know. With the Space Command headquarters relocation decision now final, what does that mean for families packing up and heading to Huntsville? We spoke with a local realtor who knows both Huntsville and Colorado to see how this move could shape our housing market. Way 31's Julia Miller has the story. I think it's very exciting, exciting time to be in Huntsville. Um, we've always been a leader in defense, and I think this is a great place to be. Meet Lauren A. Rant, a Huntsville realtor who's turned to social media to highlight why this city is worth calling home. It's often married high tech, high quality jobs with a family friendly environment. And I think if you are raising a family and you're moving here for a job, know that Huntsville is just a really great place to be. Arant knows firsthand what it's like to make that move. She came to Huntsville from Colorado just a few years ago and says that experience helps her connect with others making the same transition. Colorado, uh, I have a lot of transplant buyers coming over here, maybe looking for a bit of a more conservative undertone and can afford much more house for what their budget will allow. Now, with Space Command headquarters heading to Huntsville, Arant says home buyers will find plenty to be excited about. You're going to have a lot more affordability here in Huntsville. Um, Colorado, the price point is much higher. Down in the Springs versus Denver, it is still a little bit more affordable. But Huntsville overall, um, especially the further out you get, you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck, still with great schools, a great family-friendly environment. But she says the real test will be how builders respond to that growth. Hopefully the builders can get to work with some high-quality homes that we can offer. I know there's a lot of apartments kind of being built now, which people have opinions about. Hopefully those can hold our new residents for a while and then just the builders can continue to uh, offer quality homes for the new residents coming in. Julia Miller, Way 31 News.